I think that they should just trust Zach. He knows the offense. He's been around. Let's see how much he's already grown under the influence of Aaron Rodgers. Here's Robert Sala from yesterday on why he believes Zach Wilson can handle this moment where he's been thrust into the QB1 position. You know, from, from a mental standpoint, he's so much different uh, than uh, this time a year ago. Uh, you know, he's, he's in a great frame of mind. He's loving the game of football. He's loving the process that he's, uh, he's going through. Um, he's got a lot of confidence. Um, you know, all the, the, the little things that uh, we, we saw in college that he was struggling with a year ago are not the same struggles he was having that that, uh, that he had. You know, he's he's fixed a lot of things, a lot of things, and so we're very excited about him. Uh, obviously, he will acknowledge he still has a lot of things to learn and grow, and um, and we're excited to be able to do that with him. Uh, I think he's been able to to rebuild rapport with his teammates and uh, and just the overall, just the the way he's kind of handled himself has been fantastic. Um, but everything about him is just so much different than a year ago. So we're like I said, it's is it happening faster than I think anyone expected, obviously, um, under the circumstances. But uh, he's somebody that's made a drastic improvement from a year ago. That's a pretty candid indictment of Zach Wilson a, a year ago. And, uh -huh. you know, look, Miles, with all due respect to what Peyton Manning said the other night, this kid still got thrust into the worst possible situation imagine I mean if people are going to say and I think I saw someone yesterday suggest this was the worst possible injury ever to any team ever in the history ever of the NFL ever if that's yeah. the case Zach Wilson's the guy who got thrown into it hey kid go clean up this mess the worst possible thing that could have happened look at that throw that he made to Alan Lazard to keep the drive alive that ultimately tied the game so there's a lot of good there. And I, I wish yesterday at some point Robert Sala would have said, hey, people, did you watch the game? We won the game. Zach Wilson came off the bench on a night where he had no expectation he was going to play. That's what Chris Sims said yesterday. He's been in that position where he's the backup and he's on the sideline. And he's trying to help the starter and he's talking to guys. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, I have to go play. Like, that's a hell of a slap in the face. In. Because even though, even though you – even though we hear the cliches all the time, well, I have to prepare every week as if I'm going to play. We we know, we know yeah, that some backups just, they they play the odds. Like, man, I'm, you know, really, am I going to stay up till 2 a.m. studying the playbook as if I'm going to be the starter this weekend, this week, and next week, and next week, and next week, and next week? Hell no. Hell no. I got other stuff I'd rather do. They don't pay me to stay up till 2 a.m. every night working. So... Some of these guys aren't ready. And whether he was ready or not, guess what? They won. And in crunch time, that's what I would be showing in the film room the day after the game. Forget about breaking down all the, well, you know, you blew your assignment there. And, oh, you should have gone outside. You went inside. Hell with that. Robert Sala should have gone into the film room. And for all I know, he did. And you just play every good Zach Wilson play. Every one of them. This is what the guy did. Put yourself in his shoes. I mean, we saw some of the stories he was trying out during Hard Knocks about eagles and 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 crows and crows, whatever. Yeah. They uh, they weren't they, they didn't work for me all the time. Sorry, <laughs> That's not, sorry, coach. You didn't they didn't exactly they they didn't motivate me maybe the way Deion Sanders would. I'll just say that. And I'm not I'm not I'm not I don't personal. mean to compare Robert Sala to other personal. coaches like Jonathan it's Gannon. Personal. By saying that, but oh, wow, but, stray, Jonathan I, I Gannon, stray, Whoa. stray. <laughs> Where'd that stray. come from? <laughs> <laughs> but, but this gives Robert Sala a way to get the guys behind Zach Wilson. A coach told me years ago, you got two types of quarterbacks. Once you know this is your guy, you got the guy who naturally is going to kind of take over and show that he's the leader. That's your Peyton Manning type. Then you got the guy that needs your help as an organization. You need to prop him up. You need to put him on a pedestal. You need to go out to the media and say, you know what? We really don't need to add a quarterback. We got Tim Boyle. We got Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's our guy now. Now, maybe we'll bring in another backup in the event something happens with Zach because we just saw it happen on Monday night to Aaron Rodgers, so we need to be prepared for that eventuality. But we got our guy now. This was our plan all along, people. Were you not paying attention to hard knocks? 
Zach Wilson, we're not giving up on him. Aaron Rodgers comes in. Zach Wilson learns, presses pause on his career, hits a reset button, and then he goes. Well, that plan got accelerated, but that's still our plan. He's our guy. He's our guy. And you need to be saying that to reporters. You need to be saying that to the players because otherwise it's got no chance of working. So that's the one. And look, I don't want to criticize Robert Sala unfairly either because he's dealing with this. I mean, think about the storm he's in the middle of. We, yeah, we saw his face yeah, on Monday storm. night. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He, yeah. He, was, he was ready to go back to whatever he was doing in 2001 before he decided, I'm going to walk away from it and go coach football. He was ready to go back to that based on what happened early Monday night. That's for damn sure. But uh, I think that's where they need to get. That's Oh, there it is. That's oh, where they man. need to get, and that's where they need to be. They need yeah. to be in a spot where Zach is yeah. our guy. He won the game. He bailed us out. He drove down the field against the Bills' defense. It is not bad. And we won. Glass half full. Even if it's empty, glass half full. We don't we, we don't think the Bills' defense is bad yet, but, you know, they did soft fire their defensive we'll coordinator and their head coach is now calling defensive plays. So whatever happened there, I guess maybe we'll figure it out as the season goes on. But you're not wrong about Robert Sala Mutual and what party. he's got to do. Taking a year uh, off. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And then he's and then he's trying to get a job yeah. in the middle of the summer. What, what yeah. What's going on with that? Uh, yeah, he's taking a year off for six months. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you with Robert Sala, right? I mean, he's got to do whatever he can to motivate his team. And I give Robert Sala so much credit for having his team prepared to move on in that moment, right? Because, you, I mean, who in the world would have expected that four plays into the tenure of Aaron Rodgers, he goes out because they're cut blocking for some reason and the cut blocks weren't working, which is so funny, Mike, because a couple of plays before that, when they were cut blocking, I'm like, why are they cut blocking like this? It's not really working. And then, of course, Floyd comes in and he tackles Aaron Rodgers and the calf goes and the Achilles goes, I guess I should say. So it's just nobody would ever expect that. But the fact that the Jets won that game, right, the fact that they stayed mentally engaged, the fact that Zach Wilson was able to come in and do some things on that kind of short notice, you have to give the coaching staff credit for that because no one thinks that that's going to happen, but then everybody is able to step up, right? But how are you going to be able to do that over the course of a week of practice? This, this week of practice, these next three days are going to be so critical for Zach Wilson, that offense, and that defense watching him in practice. If they get belief that Zach Wilson can go out there and execute against the Cowboys watching in practice, right? Because even if, you know, the, 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 the offense is going against the scout team, defensive player is going to be watching. Everybody's going to be watching what Zach Wilson is doing, how Zach Wilson gets in and out of the huddle, the kinds of plays that Nathaniel Hackett thinks are going to work for Zach Wilson. It's going to be really, really critical over these next three days of practice for him to show, yes, I can do this for him to believe internally. Yes, I can do this. If, if that happens, then yeah, we're going to be able to see it. I think against the Cowboys, what kind of belief that they have in Zach Wilson. And if that belief was instilled over these three days of practice. Well, and here's the reality too. The Cowboys are not going to win every game 40 to nothing. The Cowboys did it no. last year to the Vikings, 40 to three. They're capable. If they can start scoring early, break serve a couple of times, and capitalize, it's over because that's when they unleash Micah Parsons and you can't do anything about it, and they just feast. It's like the the feeding frenzy that happens when you throw the chum into the water and out come the sharks. But if you can keep it close, things change for the Cowboys, and you got to go down there and hit them in the mouth, and they have the defense to hit the Cowboys in the mouth. Now Nathaniel Hackett has to come up with an offensive game plan that – takes some of the steam out of the pass rush, takes advantage of the fact that they've got Brees Hall, who looked pretty damn good in his first game he back did. from a torn ACL. Dalvin Cook, use them both. Come up with something that will work with the guys you have. But that's what they need to do. they got to turn the page. Just like the Giants have to turn the page on getting their asses kicked by the Cowboys, the Jets have to turn the page on having the air sucked out of them by the Aaron Rodgers injury. Here's Garrett Wilson, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Last year had the great catch in the end zone that, that eventually with the extra point tied the game and forced overtime. Here he is 
Uh, no, it didn't force overtime. The, the Bills ultimately forced it. Yeah, yeah, you didn't force overtime. Yeah, I misspoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize. Here's Garrett okay. Wilson speaking lead. about the loss of Aaron Rodgers. My heart hurts for, for Aaron. You know, first off, um, you know, just seeing him last night and, and the emotion, you know, that was going into him getting out there, being out there and, and everything that we had put in this offseason to be able to play, you know, in the games, you know, and it, and it, and it sucks, man, because... You know, you make it through a whole training camp, you make it through OTAs, you know, something that, that he didn't have to do by, by um, you know, by any means, but he wanted to, he wanted to be there and, and he did everything the right way. And then to see it all, see him um, go down like that in our first game is is um, heartbreaking. And that halftime, I just went in to check on him in the training room and, and um, you know, just, just made sure I gave him a hug, told him I love him. and. and you know, it, it really hurt my heart. He, he told me, just, sorry, kid. Said, you know, just later, he said, sorry, kid. You know, and uh, say he loved me back, and, and that was it. Hard to muster the right amount of feeling for Garrett Wilson there when one of the hosts is wearing a shirt that says, nobody cares. That's kind of the, that was a, every time they'd show, nobody cares. I'm thinking, well, but you know what? You know what? Hey, Garrett. There's some wisdom in that inadvertent, ironic message because nobody cares. Nobody cares. None of your opponents care that you lost Aaron Rodgers. They're going to use that as an opportunity to come in and kick your ass. And for him to be a young guy, and, and this is an organizational failure, I think. Everybody got too swept up, and maybe this is why they didn't want to do hard knocks because once they realized that hard knocks wasn't a bad thing, they still got swept up in the idea of the Jets are going to be great and the Jets are going to contend for a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers explained it to John McEnroe in the pregame interview on Monday night. We want to talk about it. We want to manifest it. So now that he's suddenly gone, I mean, you, you would have guessed based on Garrett Wilson's demeanor that they lost the game on Monday night. They still won the game. What they need to do right now, and I think this is a call to the entire Jets organization, starting with leadership, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, they need to set a tone of we are going to keep going. We still have a great team. We still have hope, and we're not going to feel bad for ourselves. That's the whole mindset that fueled the Patriots early in their dynasty. Somebody gets injured, and it goes back to Parcells. We talked about it yesterday, Sims and I. The idea that you never – Get down in the mouth about an injury. You never allow yourself to think, oh, well, shit happens. You keep going and you expect that the guy who takes over is going to meet the standard. Now, is Zach Wilson going to play like Aaron Rodgers? No. But can Zach Wilson play good enough for the team to win? Yes, because we just saw it happen. We just saw it happen. They were down 10 points. Yes, he can play well enough for the Jets to win with what the Jets have. So, Listen, guys, all you Jets players out there, none of whom are up this early watching this show, suck it up, move forward, and go down to Dallas and try to win the game. And then next week, try to win the game in New England, or if it's at home, I don't remember. And then next week, try to beat the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. Like you, you, just, you still have an NFL-caliber team. You still have a team that was on the cusp yes. of the playoffs last year. Just yes. go out there and do what you're supposed to do and quit worrying look and I I I don't and because I know Aaron Rodgers probably wouldn't like this attitude coming from the Jets but you know another thing that that Bill Parcells used to do and I think this is a story that Peter King told last week how he was able to hang out with Phil Simms before Super Bowl 25 and they went out and had dinner in Tampa because if you were injured and unavailable it was like you were dead to Bill mm -hmm. Parcells like they, they have to and, and I, hate, I hate to say that, but if the Jets want to get the most out of what they have, they have to move forward as if Aaron Rodgers is dead to them. Now, he could hang around and be kind of quasi-assistant coach, but you just got to forget it and you got to move forward. And I know they're, they're still in the, in the throes of dealing with it, but today, Wednesday, first major practice day before Sunday, the message from Robert Sala has got to be the Aaron Rodgers era is over. In New York, we go forward with the guys we have. 
Absolutely. I mean, you, you went to the Patriots. I'll go, you know, a couple years before where Kurt Warner comes in because Trent Green goes down, right? And we got to rally around Kurt Warner and we're going to play good football. That's what Dick Vermeil said. That's basically the message that Robert Sala was trying to say with what was going on in his press conference, right? He can't say, you know, oh my gosh, everything is over. It's so terrible. We have to play Zach Wilson. We tried to replace that. We did replace Zach Wilson and now everything is over. No, it's we believe in this team and that's what he has to do. And I, I mean, so I can say what I think reality is, but he, and talking about manifesting, has to talk about what he believes this team can be. And everybody has to believe it. And it's got to come from the head coach on down. So I, I think he's doing the absolute best he can. And, you know, when it comes to guys being replaced by injuries, that's just the reality of football, right? Move the drill. You know, we got to move on. We've got to move forward. The games are still going to come. And so nobody cares is one of those things that just is going to kind of come up because look, the games are going to be played when they're scheduled, right? Unless they flex them out. So we got to go, we got to play good football and we've got to do it with the guys that we have in this room. So it's right now it's Zach Wilson and they've got to try to instill that absolute belief. And I guess you're right. You know, you show every good thing that he did and you say, this is our team. This is what we're going to do. And this is why we believe in each other because we, we didn't just come this far to go this far, right? We've got to go and we got to play. So let's go do it. So it's, it's not just, we got to go try to win. We got to believe that we're going to go kick their ass. And that's the kind of attitude that I think Robert Saul is going to try to instill in this team. And I, I think he's going to do a good job of it, at least until we see what the results are. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.